everybody, what is up all you Slashaholics? Welcome back to the Slash Sisters. I'm Slash Sister Hallie. And I'm Slash Sister Jen. And we want to welcome you back to this wonderful little channel of horror movie reviews by true horror movie fans. Damn Skippy. Today we're going to take a deep dive into a sci-fi horror that came out shortly after the phenomenon that was Scream, and while it doesn't have the same formula as Scream, or even I Know What You Did Last Summer, it does have something in common with both those films. They're all three written by Kevin Williamson. Legend. Absolute legend. Uh, that's right, Hallie. We are talking about The Faculty from 1998. And I have to say that for me personally, I really, really love this film. I watched it way too many times in high school. Um, part of that could have been because I had a little bit of a crush on the guy that plays Stan, Sean Hattesey. And he's the only one that doesn't go on and do much yeah, of anything after He really this film. didn't. <laughs> he definitely was not a big name like some of the other people in this film, like, uh, I don't know, Josh Hartnett. Well, this was Josh Hartnett's second film. His yes. first film actually came out just a little bit before this, which is Halloween H2O. Right, right. And he's still rocking the same awful haircut in this one. It's not an awful haircut. People it's the always... way that, it's the way no, that no, he... No, yes. no it, it's not an awful haircut. Oh, people always misconstrue that. He always wore a beanie in between takes. Exactly. At least back then when he did these right, two films. Right, So it's not an awful haircut. So please, people, stop saying it's an awful haircut. Because we don't I actually don't know what the haircut's supposed to look like. Right, because it really just looks awful because of the way that his hair sat. Right, right. Um, but this is the faculty that we are talking about here, and it is big with football. Mm -hmm. Specifically, the the Hornets, because that was the, the school's mascot, Harrington Hornets. Yep. And if you want to get in on some of the football action that is Harrington Hornets, be sure to go check out our Etsy site. Which is etsy.com uh, backslash slash sisters. There, uh, we'll link it in the in the comments. Below, absolutely, too. we'll link it down on below. But there we have a oh, believe it or not, a Harrington High football shirt, along with a Woodsboro athletic, uh, athletic department and several other. I think four. we got a Springfield one for or a, 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 uh, yeah. track and field for Haddonfield. Yes, that's what it is. Yes, track and field for Haddonfield. Um, but yeah, definitely go check out those shirts and be sure to pick up your Slash Sisters merch while you're there. Why haven't yeah. you done it already? Yeah, come on. Get on it. Really? We want to see you guys out there, out and about, wearing your Slash Sister stuff, too. By the way, we got to give a big shout-out to uh, Holly and Matt Wheat. You yes. placed a, a three-shirt order with us when we were out at Midway Drive-In yes. uh, a few weeks ago. So, thank you, Absolutely. guys. Thank you, guys. So, uh, let's go ahead and get into this movie. Mm, let's, let's, let, let's, let's dive deep. Like, uh, the whole thing is set in water, even though yes. it's in Ohio. Yes. True. Uh, so the film starts with a very intense football practice where Coach Willis is yelling at the players and he tells them that they are all dead on Friday night. Uh, the quarterback is really getting it from the coach. The players walk off the field and the coach throws a big old temper tantrum just like Jenny's four-year-old child does yes, when he, he doesn't does. get his way. He does. He flips over the bench with everything that's sitting on it, like it's got the Gatorade thing on it, towels, equipment, all kinds of stuff on it. After which, he goes to town kicking and screaming and slamming his fist down on the sprinkler system. You know what's funny? I think my 10-year-old would actually probably react this way more than my 4-year-old would. <laughs> when it came down to throwing a, throwing a solid temper tantrum, that girl can throw a solid temper tantrum. Now or when she was 4? Both. <laughs> Anyway, he does all this only to be interrupted by an unseen person. So, later that evening, uh, the Harrington High staff, uh, teachers and the principal, Drake, are um, leaving the school after discussing the budget. Yeah, what, what budget? <laughs> yeah, the budget that goes 100% to the football, football team. team. Yep. And nobody else gets any money ever. Nope. <laughs> When Drake returns, Drake realizes that she forgot her keys, and she returns back to the office to get her keys, and she is attacked by Coach Willis. After begging for a pencil from the principal, yeah, and telling her how pretty she looked, yes, he then proceeds to stab her through the hand with the pencil, yeah. stating, "I've always wanted to do that." <laughs> yes. That is just beyond creepy. I know it is I mean. the way he says it too. I've always wanted. 
Right. And then proceeds to chase her through the school, leading to a very Like, really, really running, too. Like, that man is booking it. Right. <laughs> Actually, no, he wasn't. She was. He she was is. walking slowly. Oh, that's that's right. That's right. She's running, and he's just, like, following really ominously. Right. Like like creepy. killers did. Yeah. Back right? In the day. Yeah. I loved it when she slash, takes her keys and slashes Slash his face. Him in the face. Because yeah. at one point, there's a scene where he, like, tilts his head just right, and the slash makes it look like an F on his mm-hmm. face. For faculty, maybe? Right, maybe. I mean, maybe. Anyway, she gets uh, she gets back to the front door, which happens to be chained shut, which is why she needed the damn keys in the first place, mm-hmm. only to find the drama teacher standing there and emotionlessly stabs her multiple times. Yeah, with... with a pair of scissors. With a pair of scissors. And then she pres- promptly says, I've always wanted to do that. So creepy. So creepy. But you can also see um, the start of that, I've always wanted to do that, I've always wanted to do that, this kind of like weird little hive mind thing mm-hmm. that's starting to happen already. It makes, it makes you wonder if it's actually like the the people's thoughts of wanting to do that or the, if the parasite's thoughts of wanting yeah, to do that. We haven't gotten that far yet. No. Let's, let's get but, into it. Let's but, get into it. But it does make you wonder, though. Yes, it does. Uh, the following morning, the students arrive and we get basically introduced to this through this really interesting montage, starting with Casey getting his nuts drilled into a, uh, uh, railed into a, uh, a flagpole. flagpole, which kind of sucks. But he was, uh, we get to meet Casey, who is the dedicated but perpetually harassed and bullied photographer for the school newspaper. Casey is the assistant to Raging Bitch. I mean, they call, she he really calls is. her that and Stan calls her that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Delilah, but uh, the paper's editor-in-chief and head cheerleader. Mm. Double whammy. Mm-hmm. Which, I'm sorry, head cheerleaders do not run the paper. No. They just don't. No. Delilah's mistreated boyfriend, Stan, is contemplating quitting the football team to pursue academics. And he keeps kind of telling her, like, hey, I need to talk to you. And she's like, no, I'm trying to find a story. Right. And he's and like, he's like, I, I got, got your story. story. <laughs> she's like, oh, that's cute. That's cute. Right. She's like, just... that's cute. That's cute that you think that you have a story. But right. Stick to what you know, and I'll stick to what I know. Yeah. Yeah. Which is just ridiculous. Then we get introduced to Zeke, who is an intelligent yet rebellious student who is repeating his senior year. Zeke sells, among other things, uh, <laughs> a powdery ecstasy-like substance. I'm going to call it meth. Uh, it's not meth, but I mean, it's it's definitely an upper, for yes, sure. for sure. Which he distributes hidden in ballpoint pens, and he calls it scat. I'm sorry, scat is, is, scat is what you call poop. From animals that you're trying to track. That's scat. Yep. Why the Gross. fuck would I want to put something called scat up my nose? Not me. New student Mary Beth Lewis, <laughs> Mary Beth Louise Hutchison. What is Atlanta? Yeah, right. <laughs> but the three names. Hi, who knows? I mean, the only people that go by three names are, are, are assassins. Serial killers. And assassins. John Wilkes Booth, Lee Harvey Oswald. You guys say more. Yeah. Befriends the self-styled outcast Stokely, who has desperately spread rumors that she's a lesbian through the school. Uh, but we find out later that she has a crush on the quarterback, Stan. Hmm. Me and Stokely got a little something in common then, I guess. <laughs> More than one thing in common, because I pretty much looked like her all through high school, too. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Casey finds a strange creature on the football field one day while he's having lunch, uh, that day while he's having lunch, and decides to take it to their science teacher, Mr. Furlong, who is played by Jon Stewart. There is so many big names in this movie. So many. You know, we've got Casey, who's the, who is Elijah Wood. Elijah Wood. We've got Josh Hartnett as Zeke. Um, Joanna Brewster. Yep. As uh, Delilah. Uh, Clea Duvall as Stokely. Yep. We even got Usher. Yeah, Usher plays. Well, Usher he ends is up a, being the captain of the football right, team, right? But once. he's he's a football player. Then we have um, Famke Jansen, Famke Jansen, uh, John Stewart, Selma Hayek. Yeah, uh, Piper Laurie, uh, Patrick. Uh, oh, who is it that that plays Coach Willis from Terminator? I can't think of his name. Is Patrick something? We'll flash that down in the comments. It's right here. Yeah. Patrick something. Right. Patrick. <laughs> Anyways. 
Um, Robert Patrick. No. Robert Patrick? Robert Patrick. Okay. I knew there was something Patrick. Something, I knew there was a Patrick in there. Anyways, so um, he takes the specimen to Mr. Furlong, and uh, he believes that this is a new species and wants to send it off to the university. Um, to, tr to try to get in on that grant money. Yeah. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, they actually, uh, they, he, water ends up getting spilled onto the, the, uh, creature, the specimen, and it comes back to life. And then they put it into a tank of water, which shows that the tentacles come out. It shows the tentacles come out and it self replicates. Oh, it self replicates and has teeth because it bites him. Mm-hmm. Well, he's it got bites his hand them. in there. And then for Stokely it. puts her hand against the glass, and the tentacles form out to the, like the fingers of her hand, yes. trying to mimic, mimic her the hand. hand. Delilah and Casey are hot on the search for a story and head into the teacher's lounge to try to find one. They witness Coach Willis and Mrs. Olson forcing one of the parasites into the ear of the school nurse. Uh, what was what was her name? God, I can't remember her name now. Nurse, nurse thing. Right. Whatever. I literally just watched this. I, I know, right? <laughs> uh, but she's played by Selma Hayek anyway. They also find the body of another teacher, uh, Mrs. Brummel, whose body just could not take the parasite. It rejected the parasite and unfortunately was uh, dead. Yes. Um, and actually, they, Mrs. Brummel came into the shower room earlier on Stan, um, and it was explained to him that she was diagnosed with cancer. Stage four cancer. They and client. Yeah, yeah. All this, this, and whatever. And Casey was there as well when this happened. So then Casey was in the, in the closet, in the, the uh, faculty room, when they found... Mrs. Brummel. So Casey is like really like he's really starting to put things together like this is something is not Definitely. right here. Mm -hmm. Something is happening. So Casey and Delilah end up fleeing and Casey calls the police and brings the police back to the school basically. Um, but his plan... I would have liked to have seen that phone call. Oh my god. Right can you imagine? Like there's a dead body in the faculty lounge. What the hell are you doing in the faculty <laughs> lounge? You're a student. Right. Right. Um, but basically, like, the, the, the cops, like, blow him off, and, uh, well, and, and the, the principal, who we thought was stabbed to death, is magically back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How'd that happen? And she clearly infects one of the cops, too, yes. because the cop then dismisses everything as, yep. like, a kid looking for attention, but yep. you can clearly see that he's an altered mindset. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And she, like, shuts the door, she brings him into the office and shuts the door and everything, so. Right. The next day, things are getting even weirder at school, with students being called into the office for an ear exam. But they started with the most popular students first. Yeah. Which, interesting, interesting. The most popular people mo know the most people, so we're uh, slowly just spreading our little social network out. Uh, Casey ends up telling Delilah, Stan, and Stokely that he thinks, well actually him and Stokely kind of come up with the idea, that he thinks <laughs> that the teachers are being controlled by aliens. I love the conversation that Casey and Stokely have yeah. about, like, the whole pop culture thing about how, like, you have Spielberg, Sonnenfeld, and all these other directors, writers, whatever, that have been slowly saturating the, the, the media and everything like that with alien stories so that when the aliens finally do attack, it, it we won't believe it. Right. Yeah. They'll, just, they'll just think it's all, like, made up science yeah, fiction stuff. Exactly. Exactly. He even, had, he even says straight up that people always focus on the fiction aspect of it. Pointing out that Schindler's List is also found in the fi fiction section, exactly. but after Schindler's List is really it really happened. Mm -hmm. though. Yeah. So uh, after Zeke and Mary Beth overhear them in Mr. Furlong's room talking about how they think that the staff is aliens, um, they start teasing them about their theory, and Mr. Furlong comes in to the room and basically attacks them and attempts to infect them. Attempt to. He, to. He, he, he fails. Zeke uses a blade from a paper slicer to cut off Mr. Furlong's fingers. Like, that's like one of my favorite scenes when he like sticks his foot on it and pulls rips it, it out. off. Which, mind you, has a bolt that's like this long yeah. going through it. No so joke. I would have loved to actually seen that done with a real yeah. old school paper cutter yeah. like that. 
Uh, but the fingers then start to slither around like they're a parasite. Yeah. The same parasites that were in the tank earlier that they can't seem to find anymore. Yeah. He then stabs a pen full of his scat into his <laughs> eye. I know. It just sounds so gross. <laughs> I mean, now that you know what I know, scat I know, is, I know, right? I know, I know, I know. Right. But he stabs it into his eye, and it's almost instantaneous where a chemical reaction happens, and it starts, like, spewing pus and everything like that. But it does not kill him. Well, it dehydrates him, and he ends up falling over and convulsing and everything. But it does not kill him. You don't think it kills him? He's seen later in the credits, with his bandaged hand and an eye patch. Really? I just assumed he was dead. Nope, he's alive. He's missing his fingers on his right hand. Yeah. But he's alive. And in his left eye. Huh. Interesting. Uh, Zeke ends up taking the five people to his house. So that would be Zeke, Delilah, Stokely, Casey, and Stan. And Mary Beth. So it's so six. six of us. Six of them. Zeke, Zeke and, and the, the five. five. Yep. Right. So, and mind you, they all fit into the to his uh, SS Chevelle. Yeah. Okay. And they look all so comfortable, too. Like, nobody's right? complaining. Right, there's only two in the front seat and uh, four in the back seat. Yeah. But yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> so he takes them back to his house, which his parents are never there. And apparently he just, like, does experiments uh, in his garage. Uh, he's probably tweaking the formula, trying mm-hmm. to find the best best uh, ratio of chemicals right. to achieve the highest high that you can get right, off of it. Right, right, which, like... How is this kid so smart? How does he know how to do this? He's only like 18, 19 years old at the most. At the most, because he is repeating, he is repeating his, his senior year. year. So at the most, he's like 19. Um, anyways, they uh, experiment on the specimen, which had been retrieved by Casey in the room with Mr. Furlong. Mm-hmm. He basically grabbed one of Mr. Furlong's fingers that turned into a parasite. Um, he discovers that it needs water to survive and can be killed by his drug, the scat. Uh, it revealing, dehydrates him. Yeah. revealing to actually be mostly raw powdered caffeine. <laughs> well, actually, and it was the some, caffeine pills that you would crush. Yes, caffeine pills and some other household items is what he says. Right. So I actually have a problem with this scene right here, and I did not actually have a problem with this scene until this watch through for, for this review. In this scene, he infects his little mouse friend mm-hmm. that he has, the pet mouse that he has with the parasite and then immediately breaks his neck, yeah. dissects the dissects the mouse and extracts a full-fledged parasite from the mouse's body. Right. The problem that I have is we have learned actually later in the film that ordinary methods of killing the host's body for the parasite do not kill the host's right. body. Right, right. I mean, Famica Jensen's character, after she's infected later in the film, has her head completely cut off of yeah. her body. And, and the head, like, grows tentacles and, and crawls back around. to the yeah. body. So the mouse should, in theory, with this new information, not be fully dead. Yeah, you're right. I never thought about that before. So I have, that's a, that's a glaring plot hole yeah, right there. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Anyway, after he determines that his scat... We've got to find a better name for it. We really do. Uh, can kill, harm, whatever, the parasites. He forces everyone to take a hit of his nose candy. <laughs> what I mean, it is. It's a little bit better. That's what it is. <laughs> and uh, basically determine if they're aliens or not, because anybody could be infected. Yeah, and, I, and this, this scene reminds me of, like, the thing, when they're all in the room and they're, like, testing, testing the blood. blood. Yes, um, yes. And just, like, the, the speculation and, like, everybody right. being so, right. like... Like, I can almost guarantee you the thing oh, heavily inspired this scene. For sure, for sure. But this scene also just absolutely cracks me up, because they all end up... Well, I mean, I'm gonna say the line. He's tweaking, man. You gotta let him tweak. Let him fucking tweak! Let him fucking tweak! 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 <laughs> but there's... And I have a problem with this scene now, too. Because later in the film, and we'll get to that when it, when she goes back and tells the story, but yeah. Mary Beth clearly takes the hit. Yes. Because the pen cap is on after she takes the hit. Yes. But she tells him later that... That she slid oh, it off. Oh, can you be sure of what you really saw? Right, right. Whatever. 
Um, but they determined that Delilah is in fact infected, and she re- she tried to take the hit, threw it away, and you see some creepy, creepy things all over her face. underneath her skin. Underneath the skin, <laughs> gross. Uh, she destroys most of Zeke's lab and most of his scat supply. Still, uh, before escaping into uh, the the student driver car. Yeah. <laughs> I think she was picked up by one of the teachers. She too, was. She was picked up by the uh, what was it? The social studies teacher. <laughs> so funny. Acting solely, uh, acting on Stokely's speculation that killing the queen alien will revert everyone back to normal, the group returns to the school where the football team is playing and infecting members from the other team. I mean, they are just brutally kicking everyone's yeah, ass. Yeah, and like what kind of went through my mind when I was watching this was like, okay, why would you be infecting them, like, while you're playing against them? Like, wouldn't you want to beat them first and then, like, infect them at the end of the game? I don't know. Whatever. They isolate her in the gym, fatally shooting her, or... Well, they don't. They think it was fatal. And, And this is where we find out that typical means of killing a, a human do not fucking work because well, they shoot her in the head and she stands back up. Well, and not only that, she was clearly stabbed to death at the beginning of the movie. And she then was stabbed to death well, before she was infected with the parasite. So how did they? The parasite re- re- revived it, her. Uh, healed her. Okay. Because if you watch Coach Willis after he gets the keys across his face, yeah, no, the, the next day heals it heals within two quickly. days. Yeah, it, it's yeah. completely healed in two days. So. Yeah. The parasites have a way of rapidly healing their host body right. for protection purposes. Right, right. Or I'm assuming, I mean... But... but they shoot her and she gets up. Yeah. San ends up uh, deciding oh, to... they shoot her and Mary Beth dumps the almost entire, all, almost the scat all of the scat onto her. Onto her, dissolving her body. Yeah. So she is, she is dead. Yes, for sure. After that. And they think that it's not didn't work, right? So they end up. That it's not so the queen. Stan basically is like, okay, I'm gonna go out and check. And he goes to the door, and Stokely grabs them and kisses them in the most beautiful little embrace. Whatever. And she says, <laughs> I just never, I just didn't want to never. Didn't want to never have done that. <laughs> Which is weird because all of the parasite infected humans go saying, I've always wanted to do that. Yeah, but neither of them were infected at that point. That we know of. Because Stokely does get infected later. Yeah. And so does Stan. Well, yeah. And but Stokely I don't think either of them was, was infected at that point. I'm just saying. If Stokely was, man, I don't know when or, or how, I guess. <laughs> so Stan ends up going to the door and he's going to go out and basically just like confront check, the coach. Confront the coach and see if they've gone back to normal. Mm hmm. And, uh, basically when he goes out there, he sees that they are all still infected and he becomes infected himself. He tries to get back in. They give him the, like, last hit of the scat they have. The last one that they have. And he dumps it on the ground and basically tells, like, everyone, including Stokely, don't you want to be beautiful? Don't you want to be free? Which makes me so mad because, mm. like, she just kissed him. And then he's like, you'll be beautiful. You'll be beautiful. Like, you're telling her that she's not beautiful right now. Like, mm, mm-hmm. dude, mm-hmm. not cool. Not cool. So Zeke realizes that he may have some more of his nose candy out in his car. Yes. So him and Casey go out to retrieve it, to which Casey promptly says, does it really take two of us to retrieve this? Zeke says, nope. One, One of, of us, us is, is a decoy. decoy. <laughs> Guess who the decoy is? Yeah. Not Zeke. Nope. Nope. It's fucking Casey. Never. So, Casey leads the infected students away from Zeke. He climbs up onto a school bus. Yep. Delilah confronts him. Inside the school bus. Inside the school bus. And then the players literally break the back door, break the glass on the back door, somehow open... climbs up the top. Right, but the players get into it whilst he's climbing up and... Yeah. It's a... It's... It's it's a very convoluted scene that I do not think is plausible in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Anyway, Zeke is confronted by Miss Burke in the parking lot. Basically, she is a totally different Miss Burke than she was earlier. So Miss Burke confronted him earlier in the film when she said, "You cannot conduct 
business personal on business personal on business school on school property. property and he's like well we got a problem because this is my car and it's my property right he offers her chocolate flavored lax laxatives at the time she's not interested he offers her cherry flavored condoms to which she turns around in disgust yes and she's there now asking for, for something the... cherry flavored right because she is completely a different person uh-huh uh-huh Zeke gets in his car, grabs the scat, and she crashes through the passenger window, and he's swerving around the parking lot. And mind you, the parking lot is full of fucking school buses. Yeah. I don't understand why there are that many school buses on school property, because I've never known any school to have the school buses on school property. Yeah, me either. They've always got, like, a bus barn or something. Right, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway... He's in the parking lot, swerving around all these buses, and he finally attaches his seatbelt and slams into one of the buses, and Miss Burke goes flying out the window. This is the scene where we and get... And seeing her body fly is fucking hilarious. <laughs> this is the scene where she gets decapitated, and her little head grows tentacles and crawls back over to her body, and Zeke's like, fuck this! Right, and he literally just, like, he runs off, but he's not even running that fast. He's just kind of like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go now. Right, right. <laughs> So back in the gym, Mary Beth reveals herself to be the alien queen to Stokely. You uh, didn't see that one coming. Raise your hand. Yeah, I didn't think so either. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, she reveals that she faked the the nose candy, that she somehow slid the... <gasps> oh, no. She had to have slid the thing off and put it back on <gasps> oh, no. somehow. I don't know. Right. Anyways, so she basically ends up like chasing Casey and Stokely through the pool. Uh, she swims through it, which kind of bothers me a little bit because, like, there's a lot of chemicals in that pool, and if she's allergic to everything... Well, she says water... she's allergic to aspirin yes. in the beginning of the yes. film. Yes, yes. But the problem that I have is, like, it's fresh water that resuscitates them. That is very heavily, like, chemi like yeah. you said, chemical yeah. water, so it's basically, like... I mean, it's bleach. Yeah. Bleach dehydrates stuff. Little bottle. Little bottle. That is. <laughs> Glaring bottle. Not not to mention, why the fuck would you invade Ohio? There's right. No There's no big bodies right. of water there. Right. You would think that you would go somewhere like, I don't know. Well, she did say she came from Florida. No, she came from Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, that's right. Atlanta, Georgia. Water. Still a landlocked state. <laughs> Anyways, they flee to the swimming pool, and Stokely is injured. She basically, like, bashes her over the head and pulls her into the pool. Casey swims in and saves her, and... How, I do not know. How, I really don't know. And how she becomes infected and he doesn't... Is baffles another me a little bit, too. Yep. Zeke. But she becomes infected. Right. Stokely becomes infected. Zeke and Casey hide in the locker room where Mary Beth reverts to her human disguise... She explains she is taking over Earth because her planet, that is full of water, is dying. I, lo I love how Zeke points out, why are you naked, Mary Beth? <laughs> yeah, because she's like, uh, uh, she's, the, she's the queen. She tries to say, say that it's Stokely, so right? right? And he's like, yeah, but like, why are you naked? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're literally trying to convince liter probably the smartest kid in school yeah. that you're not the queen. You really think it's going to work? Yeah. And then you're standing there butt naked. Right, <laughs> right. So Mary Beth ends up transforming into her true form and hurls Zeke back across the room and into the lockers, knocking him out. Cue Wilhelm scream. Yeah. Actually, not really, but it would have been a great place right, for it. Right, right. Casey seizes the drug uh, after he gets his scalp ripped off by fucking Stokely. Oh, shit. And traps the queen behind retracting bleachers. I, I'm sorry. I, I actually went to a school that had retracting bleachers. Yes, yeah, so did we. Um, they do not retract that no, fast. No, they sure don't. They are slow moving. They're like, right. And they do, and they specifically do not slam no, shut like they did on no, that queen. No. Anyway, uh, he stabs the drug into her queen, into her queenie eye, and basically says, "Guaranteed to jack you up," which is. <laughs> one of the things that Zeke said to the kids earlier yep. that he was selling the scat. Yep. <laughs> uh, Casey returns to the locker room to find Stokely and Zeke alive and parasite-free. Yes. Uninfected. One month later, everyone has returned to normal. 
Mostly. <laughs> no, I mean, pretty much everyone's I mean, pretty much, I mean, people have returned to normal, but, like, is it normal for Stan and Stokely to be dating? I Not mean... Not really. Is it normal for Delilah, like Casey the cheerleader, to be dating, to be dating Casey? I no. Mean, not but, really. But trauma, but, but trauma a has a, yeah, trauma has trauma a way bonding. of affecting yeah. people's minds to alter who they really are. Yeah, for sure. I mean, trauma does show people's true colors for yeah. the most part. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Stan and Stokely are now dating, and uh, my least favorite thing about this movie is the fact that Stokely is, like, not goth anymore. She just, like, isn't herself anymore. See, she has that problem with it. I have this problem with it. Zeke has taken Stan's place on the football yeah. team on his second senior year. Yeah. Whatever. And this is the biggest problem. He's dating a fucking teacher. teacher. Yeah, it's gross. It's gross. Like, I don't, I don't like care it. if the teacher is only four years older than him. That's fucking gross. Don't care. That's that's like that goes against ethics and. Shit. It goes against morals. Morals and ethics. Yeah. And I guarantee if any school found out a teacher was dating a student, whether they were 18 or not, that teacher's getting fired. Fired. For Bare sure. minimum, fired. For sure. Even 25 years ago, she would have gotten fired. Yes. Yeah. So Delilah, apparently no longer a vindictive raging bitch, <laughs> is now dating Casey who is considered a local hero by various news media, and they... Oh, they, they attempt... Uh, about the... Uh, because they revealed everything about the attempted alien invasion. Um, it's public knowledge, even though the FBI says that it never happened. The authorities deny it's ever happened, and, like, the news outlets, not even local news outlets, some of them are, like, network outlets right. that are trying... They're trying to get a scoop on the story. Right. A month later, mind you. Yeah. Like, really? The hubbub hasn't died down in four weeks? I, w I will say, for a horror movie, for a sci-fi horror movie, um, we end this, like, on just such a pleasant little note. Like, it's such a happy ending. It is such a happy ending for the people that survive. Yes. Because true. there are clearly several people, well, at least one person does not survive, and that is the principal, because she's right. literally melted. Yeah, and um, Mary Beth obviously dies. Mary Beth, she but was she the was alien. the queen. Yes. And then we have uh, Mrs. Brummel. She yes. dies. Yeah, for sure. And those are the only fatalities in this for some unforeseen reason. Not, yeah. not Mr. Furlong. Yeah, which not does die. not make any sense to me. I'm telling you, go back, watch the credits. I He's will. Alive. I will. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he is, but um, yeah, I... I that doesn't make any sense. He got <laughs> stabbed with the drug, the drug that supposedly kills them. It should have been... Yeah. Anyways. So, uh, for me, personally, this is a big old bloody machete up. Uh, two. Straight to the sky. Yep. Because I, I... I talk about, like, these films from, like, the 90s and early 2000s. These are our horror films. Yeah, these are what sure. was popular when we were the age of the actors yep. in these films. Yep. And it's just, it will always hold a special place in my heart because of the actors that are in it, the director behind it, the screenwriter behind it. It is just... I mean, it has its hold. It definitely has its flaws. There's uh, plot the, holes. We've there's definitely pointed several out that, several of the flaws. Yes, yes. But, but it's always going to hold such a special place in my heart. All, I've watched this movie All so around, many times. it's still a good story in yeah, my eyes. for sure. So. I agree. Let's send this straight back to space, where the parasites belong. Yes. What are we going to do next, Sally? Well, I noticed that our favorite holiday is coming out. It is. And what could you do for Halloween but a Halloween film? Yes. But what Halloween film should What we Halloween do? movie should we do? Hmm. There's so many to choose from. Well, there are 12 Halloween films in the franchise. That's true. That's true. I know we did Trick or Treat last year. We did Halloween 1 last year as well. But we're going to break. We're going to skip a little. We're, we're going to break the, the, the franchise rules, if you care to follow us, down the rabbit hole and a take a look at Halloween, Halloween 3. three. Season of the Witch. Because it may not have anything to do with the Halloween franchise, but it is still a good it standalone is, Halloween film It itself. really is, and it is an important film, I think. Uh, and it's just, there's so much fun about it. There's a lot of good things about this movie. You've got to really take it out of the context of the rest of the Halloween storyline, though. Absolutely. 
Um, so yeah, we'll, we're going to get into this next week, mm -hmm. and uh, we hope you join us back here. Until then, be sure to stab that like button, and slash the subscribe button, and ringling that grave bell so you don't get buried alive and can stay up to date on all of our videos. Until then, we will see you all in the afterlife. Yeah. <laughs>